This could be the best rock album of the year. Hey guys, welcome back. Matt with Rock Dads. Uh, today we are doing an album review for Sleep Token. At this point, if you've been anywhere near YouTube in the last 24 to 48 hours, you've been inundated with uh, reviews for this album. Um, highly, highly, highly anticipated, which is crazy considering the fact that not a lot of people really know about this band, um, especially in the mainstream, but in the in the areas like YouTube and on the internet and uh, Reddit and all these other places uh, in social media, uh, they're exploding. Um, and rightfully so. These guys have been putting out bangers uh, for a few years now. I will actually get into a little bit about that. But what I keep seeing um, are reviews that just absolutely uh, – sing the praises of the band. Um, and I've seen a couple out there that really just kind of seem like clickbait where it's talking about how the album is not that great and everybody's entitled to their opinion. But sometimes I believe that, you know, we're, we're making reviews out here I should be fairly honest for what the, uh, the medium is that we're looking at or hearing in this case and uh, should probably be as, authentic as humanly possible. Now, that being said, I'm a super fan of the band. I uh, have been for a while. Um, so take everything that I say from this point on with a grain of salt. I got introduced to the band um, a couple of years ago and never jumped into it. So I had heard about them, but did not actively go out and try to listen to any of the music. Honestly, when you look at these guys, the first thing that kind of comes to mind is possibly a black death metal band. Um, probably one of the reasons I stood away from it, you know, for as long as I did. Um, and in that time, they actually put out two albums. So the first one, Sundown, it came out around 2019. The second, uh, This Place Will Become Your Tomb, came out in 2021. Uh, and the latest album, the one we'll be talking about today, Take Me Back to Eden, uh, came out <laughs> yesterday. So, you know, if, there's anything out of that to take away from this band is that they don't wait around. I remember back in the nineties where, you know, you could pretty much like clockwork know when a band was going to come out with a new album because it was usually a, a two year touring cycle and then boom, new album, new touring cycle, two years go by, boom, new album. Over the last probably 15 years or so, um, it's been less and less the case. So you've seen longer and longer periods between albums, you know, in some cases, five years, maybe even longer. Thanks, Tool. And that's all well and good. But here is a band that has really embraced this, <laughs> this concept over the last few years of just hit them over the head with content for a very short amount of time. So 2019, Sundowning comes out. 2021, uh, This Place Will Become Your Tomb comes out. And then now we have Take Me Back to Eden. So I appreciate the fact that a band is is really you know embracing this idea of not waiting so long. Um, I think that it helps tremendously uh, with staying in the public eye and in the public ear. And this band, for everything that we're going to talk about today, needs to be heard, in my opinion. Absolutely needs to be heard by everybody because there are elements to each album and really in, in a lot of these songs that can speak to almost everyone across genres. One of the most compelling things about this band is, is how well they integrate different genres into different songs. And none of it feels contrived. None of it feels like it's forced. It feels natural based on how the songs are structured, the flow, the transitions. Everything is just is really, really well crafted. I could go on all day uh, about different aspects of the last two albums, um, which I thought were absolutely amazing. We're going to kind of stay focused on Take Me Back to Eden. Um, which seems to be the culmination of a three album arc. And 
I, you can't say enough about how well that they closed the book on this story arc um, with this album. It follows a lot of the traditional song structures that, that we're kind of used to with Sleep Token in that there are multiple layers to each song, uh, multiple ways of presenting the music and, and dipping into different genres that are just uh, they're mind blowing what these guys can do. Um, very well, in very well, they could be the the most important band going into the 21st century. I mean, what they're able to do, how well they're able to do it, and with the consistency with which they're able to do it, is is absolutely mind boggling. Now, with this album being the culmination of of this story arc, one of the things that I found the most intriguing about it was and I don't want to spoil too much of it but there are callbacks to previous albums previous songs um, that really give you this sense of closure and I found that with this album the, the emphasis was a little bit more on Vessel the lead singer's uh, vocals and the lyrics than it was so much you know the the other musicians in the band's uh, participation or or uh, what what they brought to the table and and the only reason I say that and don't get me wrong every musician in this band is absolutely incredible absolutely incredible um, I think that there are probably just as many reaction videos to who who is the drummer of the band there's many reaction videos to his playthroughs as there are to a lot of the uh, studio uh, videos that the band has done over the past couple of years. The guy, uh, Nick Nocturnal said it really well in his video uh, that he did a couple of days, days ago about how to do sleep token in 30 seconds, like God tier drumming. Like the guy is, is next level. And if you haven't checked it out, you definitely need to, especially as playthroughs. Um, the one for hypnosis is just out of sight. Um, but again, I felt like the, with this album, there was more of a push for the story as opposed to some of the musical elements because I felt like two was a little more subdued in this album as opposed to previous albums. And don't get me wrong, songs like The Summoning, he just knocks it out of the park. Take Me Back to Eden, uh, that track, which is the next to last track on the album, blows your mind. Absolutely blows your mind if if you're into drumming the way that I am and you kind of focus on that more so than some of the other aspects of the uh, of the music. But throughout most of it, I felt like it was a little bit taken, you know, pushed to the back a little bit. Like, hey, man, take it a little easy. Don't go crazy like you normally do, which we absolutely love. Because we're we're constructing this thing in a way that we're trying to almost like they're winding down, and and by winding down I just mean the the story itself that that we've gone through uh, with this group over the course of these three albums, and for it to culminate to to end in the song Euclid the way that it does, and the the lyric dropping that it does again from previous previous albums is is pure genius just absolute genius we've i personally have seen this in in uh other bands do this and it works really well there are certain elements in that song with the lyrical applications that are in there and there's a line in Euclid that almost just feeds you yes I am the guy you think I am from that other group. And that little, that little nugget was another one of those just, you know, Oh my God, I didn't think these guys could surprise me any more than they already have yet. They did again. And it really, at least for me gives a, it just builds up a lot of hope for the future of music. When you've got bands out there that, that are being as, conscientious as they are with the different elements that they're bringing to the table and presenting it in such a way that is masterclass. It is 
absolutely incredible what these guys are able to do with all the different instruments, all the layering, uh, the the vocal spectrum of Vessel, again, has probably been reviewed more than some of the, the, uh, the albums or uh, the videos that they have done um, because it is so, so good. I don't want to go, you know, song by song throughout this whole thing, because I think really to get the most out of this album, you really need to go back to sundowning and just start from the beginning. Because without that, I don't think that you really capture the, the true uh, ambiance, the true, uh, the, I hate to say the word closure, but that's what it feels like. It, it's like, wow, this came full circle. It did it in a really intelligent way. Not only did it do that, but it it just presented uh, a it presented a narrative that has taken us on a journey for years. And this is the it feels like the right kind of conclusion. And I sincerely hope personally that the next stage of this band doesn't stray too far from what they've done with these three albums and how they've constructed the narrative and the way that they have genre bend this entire time. Um, I think it's exactly what the music scene needs right now because there's a lot of wannabes out there and a lot of like, Hey, we're just going to, we're going to smash these two genres together just because that's what's popular right now. And you know, just cram it down people's throats. And because we're on a major label and because we've got the marketing backing, it's just what people are going to like and it's going to hit top 40 and we're going to make a lot of money. That is not how any of these albums have felt. It doesn't feel forced, doesn't feel contrived, doesn't feel like they're in it for the money. For as much as there are conscious decisions going into each and every track, there is just as much the feeling that, this is just who these guys are. This is just the way that they play and how they're able to incorporate all of their different influences into one place that turns into this musical magic. So I, I really hope that they're able to, to create a new narrative and a new, I mean, a new book. You know, if you want to call the last three albums, three chapters of a book, that the next book is is just as as compelling, just as thoughtful and, and just as incredible as the last three chapters have been. So I will say this, do I have my favorites on this album? I do. Um, there are a couple of tracks that I think for me just spoke to kind of my tastes and, and my personality more than others. And that's another great thing about this band is that, they're able to take you not only through the albums on an emotional roller coaster, but within even songs, they're able to do it. And again, if you have the opportunity, you absolutely need to go out and listen to these albums so that you understand a little bit more about what I'm saying, because it's something you have to experience. Um, when, when I'm saying that we're combining different genres, I'm talking metal and jazz in the same song. I'm talking hard rock and R&B in the same song. And it may be difficult to kind of wrap your mind around that. And trust me, I get it. But once you hear it, it is undeniable. And then you get into, oh, my God, not only is this the, the culmination of these two kind of genres, but they're doing it better than anybody else out there. It is it is mind blowing how well that they're able to to incorporate these different elements and create the product that they do. That is is not only musically compelling, it's lyrically compelling. The the visuals that they have done over the past few years with the videos have been just it's just a masterclass from start to finish. And again, you know, I, I truly believe that they're probably the most important rock band uh, in the world right now. And I hope that for their sake, that they get more visibility. But selfishly, I hope that 
nobody else <laughs> finds out about them. Um, and if that were the case, I probably shouldn't do this video, but I feel like it would be doing a disservice to what these guys have given the world. More people need to hear this band. More people need to be aware of the impact that they're having uh, in the industry, um, front to back, from a marketing standpoint, from a musicianship standpoint, from a, how you're supposed to incorporate different musical genres into one single song, package, album, however you want to look at it. These guys are doing it right. And they will become the standard by which all other musicians or groups that dive deeper into, into this blend are, are judged. And honestly, until something else comes along, that's even more mind blowing. I mean, it's probably going to be that way for quite some time. Um, I know I, <laughs> I said I had some favorite songs, but I, I failed to kind of mention what they were, but uh, number one, Vore, um, to me, I, everybody talks about the summoning and it is an absolute banger and takes you on that sort of emotional roller coaster that I was talking about earlier. But for me and, and for very personal reasons, Vore is probably like easily top one or two out of, out of the album. Um, I am somebody that has uh, previously been diagnosed with bipolar. And when I hear songs that just fluctuate so dramatically between one emotional spectrum and the other, I connect with it a lot easier um, than I do something that's a little bit steady in its presentation throughout the, the entirety of the song. Um, so songs like Vor is one of those things that just really resonated with me. So did the summoning because it has those same elements in it. Um, and the title track, take me back to Eden. Uh, those are easily right now, you know, having listened to the album a couple of times, those three probably stick out more, uh, than any of the other tracks, but that does not downplay, um, the emotionality, the, the, the sort of impact that the other songs have. Um, again, Euclid, wow, just wow. Front Euclid is one of those songs that, because of what the song does, rather than the 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 music itself, um, which is very uplifting, very very powerful sounding song. Um, it's how it wraps up these three albums that makes Euclid so unique. If we're talking about specific songs and direct personal connection, the the summoning for and take me back to Eden are are probably my favorites. Um, yeah, these guys, wow. I can't I can't recommend the album enough. You need to go out and get it. Listen to it on Spotify. Listen to it on Amazon Music. However you can, um, open your minds, open open your ears, and really find there will be something that you can find that you can connect to within this album and the previous two. And I highly recommend that you go listen to all of them. So that's it for this review for Take Me Back to Eden by Sleep Token. Again, highly recommend you go out and get, um, do me a favor, you know, like, subscribe, hit that notification button. So, you know, when we put out a new video, if you are a dad that just loves music, do us another favor, jump over to uh, Facebook and join the Rock Dads Facebook group. I got a link down below. We'd love to have you where we talk about being dads, music, mindset, mentorship, and all the things that are great about all of that. Uh, we'd love to have you join and, and continue that conversation over there. Till next time, have a good one.